Hello and welcome to The Wargamer and you're joining me for another bolt action painting tutorial. This time I'll be showing you how to paint the German Grenadiers using the Army Painter range of paints to do so. The first task after assembling your Grenadier is to prime it. Now I've used a grey spray primer for this task. After priming you'll then want to paint both the jacket and the trousers using field grey. When applying base coats such as this, I would recommend creating a mixture of two parts paint to one part water. Apply this mixture over the miniature, allow it to dry, and then apply a second coat over the top. This will provide the best coverage possible. Following the base coat, the next step is to darken the field grey that we applied in the previous step. Now for this, I'll be using a wash of dark tone ink. This will pull into the recesses, creating shading, and also darken the colour of the field grey slightly as well. Now applying these inks straight out of the bottle can be a little bit too intense, so I'd recommend mixing in one part water to one part ink and building up the layers slowly. The final step in painting the jacket and the trousers is to apply a highlight of castle grey. Now you want to focus this highlight onto the raised sections of cloth, just dragging a small amount of paint on the tip of your brush along these edges to create a very thin line. This highlight will not only enhance the detailing in the cloth but also create the effect of light hitting the top of the miniature and reflecting off these raised sections. The next area I'll be painting will be the tent quarter poncho. Now for this I'm using a base coat of Banshee Brown. I'm applying this across both the helmet and also the poncho. As before, make sure you thin down your paint and apply two thin coats. After applying the base coat, the next step is start applying some of the camo patterning on the poncho and the helmet. Now for this, I'm going to be using werewolf fur. When painting this camo, make sure you apply the paint in random patches across the material. If you're struggling on how to apply this, I would recommend taking a look online as there is plenty of reference material of these types of clothing. The second step of applying the camo onto the poncho and the helmet will be using army green. Now, be like before, we want to apply this in random patches across the miniature. However, we want to make sure that we still retain the banshee brown showing through beneath the camo pattern. At this stage, I would recommend applying the army green next to any brown patches you may have applied in the previous section. At this stage, the camo patterning should be completed. However, at the moment, it's looking a little bit too clean, so we're going to be applying a wash of strong toning across all of these areas. This wash will not only help us to darken the colour of the poncho slightly, but it'll also pull into the recesses and really enhance those details in the cloth. The next area on this miniature that I'll be painting will be the black leather. Now this can manifest itself in a number of different ways. This can include the ammo pouches and webbing, and also the boots and other equipment on the back of the miniature as well. Now for this, I'll be applying a base coat of Necromancer Cloak. After applying the base coats, we can now begin our highlights on these black leather areas. Now for this, I would recommend using a stone golem. Once applied, this light grey will give the effect of shiny leather, with the light hitting the edges and being reflected off them. Again, make sure you just use a small amount of paint on the tip of your brush for this step, and lightly drag them across the edges of the miniature. The next step in painting our grenadier is to paint any of the green equipment, and for this, I'll be using Cultist Robe. On this particular miniature, I'll be painting the gas mask canister of the grenadier. However, there may be other equipment items that you could paint in a similar colour. Again, it's always useful to do a little bit of background research to find out what colours your equipment came in. After applying the base coat of Cultus Robe, I'll now be washing over using Dark Tone Ink. Now this will pull into all of the recesses and really enhance the detailing on the green areas. Once again, mixing in just a small amount of water here will allow you to get the best control and coverage of the ink as possible. Continuing with painting the equipment, and I'll be painting the handle on the entrenching tool and also the canteen as well. Now I'll be painting these areas using Leather Brown. However, you could use the steps presented here to paint any of the satchels or pouches that the Grenadier may have. Now, applying a layer simply involves painting over the areas, but leaving the darker colour visible in the recesses. As with our base coats, mixing in just a small amount of water here will provide better control over the paint, and also a better blending between the lighter and darker colours. In addition to the layer, I'll also be base coating the satchel using this same paint. Now in order to enhance the shading and bring out some of these details, I'll now be applying a wash of soft tone ink across the wooden handle and also the canteen. Now in addition to that, I'll also be applying this wash over this satchel that I painted in the previous step. For this next step, I'll again be using Banshee Brown, but instead of using it as a base coat, this time I'll be applying it as a highlight across the edges of the satchel. Simply use this paint along with a thin brush to highlight some of the ridges and folds in the cloth of the satchel. The next area of the miniature that I'll be painting will be the wooden stock of the weapon and also the boots as well. Now depending on the type of boots that your grenadier is wearing, you'll either be painting them with a red leather, following the steps I'll be detailing shortly, or with a black leather. If it's the latter, then simply follow the same steps as I detailed earlier on for painting black leather. 
Now don't forget that as this is a base coat, make sure that you thin your paints down and apply at least two thin coats. Following the application of the base coat, I'll now be applying a wash of light tone ink across the wooden stock of the weapon. Now the reason for only applying it over the weapon at this stage is I'll be using a different wash on the boots later on. This will simply help to create some variety between the reddish browns that I'll be using on this miniature. Again, make sure you're using a really thin brush for this step because these areas are very small and intricately detailed. With the wash over the wooden weapon stock completed, we can now continue working on the boots. Now for the step, I'll be using a wash of strong tone ink across the leather, and this just creates a dark color than what we got from the light tone ink earlier. So simply apply the wash over the entirety of the boot, making sure the wash pulls into all of the recesses. With the wash of strong tone ink dried, I'll now be applying a highlight of troll claws across the boots. Now this will have a twofold effect, not only will it enhance the detailing on the boots, but it also create the effect of wear and tear and scuffed leather on the boots themselves. So when applying this highlight, make sure you pay particular attention to the edges that you would imagine getting scuffed, such as the toe and also the back of the boot as well. The next task in painting our Grenadier is to tackle the rifle strap and also the chin strap on the helmet. Now for this we want to achieve a dark leather effect, so for this I'll be using Oak Brown. With the base coat of Oak Brown completed, the next step is to apply a highlight of Leather Brown. Now this time we want to apply the paint just along the edges of the straps. Now pay particular attention when actually applying this to the chin strap as you don't want to overspill onto the other areas of the miniature. The next area of the Grenadier that we'll be painting will be the skin. Now we want to paint both the hands and the face with a base coat of tan flesh. This will give us a really nice dark skinned colour in which to build up from. And remember, as with all of our previous base coats, make sure you apply a mixture of two parts paint to one part water. With the base coat completed, we now want to bring out those details in both the face and the hands. Now for this, I'll be applying a highlight of Barbarian Flesh. With just a small amount of paint on the tip of your brush, you just want to pick out the raised sections such as the knuckles and also the facial features along the nose and upper cheeks as well. To finish off painting the skin, we want to blend in the previous two layers of Barbarian Flesh and Tan Flesh by applying a wash of a Flesh Wash. Now this will pull into the recesses, enhancing the shading, but also tying in the two layers that we applied in the previous steps. Now when applying this, make sure you apply it over the entirety of the skin, both on the face and also the hands. So now that we've completed all of the matte paints, the next step is start applying some of the metallics. Now first, we want to paint all of the silver metallic areas on the miniature using gunmetal. So these areas will include the weapon itself, but also some buckles and buttons across the miniature. You could even use this paint to paint along the edges of some of the metal canisters, such as the gas mask canister, to create the effect of paint that's chipped off over time. However, as this is a metallic paint, be extremely careful when applying it, as it can be quite difficult to overpaint metallic paints if you spill onto other areas. The very final step in painting our Grenadier is to darken down the colour of the metallic areas, because at the moment they're looking a little bit too bright. Now for this I'll be using a wash of dark tone ink. Now you can apply this wash over the entirety of the metal areas that we painted in the previous step. Again, just being careful not to overspill onto the areas that we've already painted in previous steps. You could also take this opportunity to apply the dark tone ink across the black leather areas we painted in the previous steps. This will just darken the colour down slightly and really bring out those details. And here we have the fully painted Grenadier, who you can see I've also based. Now if you enjoyed this tutorial, please do let me know in the comments below, as well as subscribing to be kept up to date with all of my future tutorials. You can also find out about the projects that I'm currently working on by checking out both my Facebook and Instagram pages, which you can find links to in the description below. From there you can donate to me from as little as a dollar a month, which just really help me in producing future content. So all that's left to say is thanks for watching, and goodbye.